goodbye Apex, goodbye Cyber, and goodbye to Vitality. In Katowice, the new kings of the game has taken their place at the top of Counter-Strike. It's a very unlikely team, Ens. But how did Ens, a team barely ranked top 50, beat the best team in the world? From crazy clutches, weak sight holds, and a star player not performing, this match has it all. And today we're breaking down the match between Vitality and Ens, as well as Spink's POV to understand what even happened to him. And starts a pistol round with two smokes, two flashes, and one Molotov. These are good utilities for a fast execute, since two smokes are enough to block out any CTs rotating into sight. As well as the Molotov and flashes can be used to take ramp control rather fast by Molotoving short, headshot, or sandbags, and then using a flash like this to blind any CTs still fighting after. While Vitality has bought a nade and two flashes, and these are done to set up for the retake by using the nade to break the smokes and then flashes to take back sight. So who will win this? The game plan from Ens is quite easy to understand even for a silver. It's a classic rush, with 5 players straight up to ramp. And this is done since usually on A site, CTs will be 3 players, but there is an exception to this play. And that is in pistol round, since B is so hard to retake without a proper buy and nades. So in pistol, B and mid will be heavier reinforced than any other site. And this is what Ens wants to abuse. While Vitality are set up with 2 on A, 2 in mid and 1 on B. And here they want to use flames for early info, and he's a great aimer, so they expect him to even get a kill in ramp and fall back. So we'll see how much that advantage matters as the first kill goes the way of the pulls. But that's are strong, too strong maybe. And when you need to focus on five players running at you, it's tough. And here Ens finds the first kill. And to meet this, Apex throws this nade out, and this is a great nade. But the whole idea of using it for retake is out of the window. And how can that affect Vitality? Well, you will soon see. Vitality gets ready to meet the utility with the flash from Apex. Only problem is that if it's smoked, it's hard for Vitality to even push and reclaim sight. And now you cannot remove the smoke since Vitality has no nades left. And starts by smoking back sight, but there's a problem. They are a little off sync with the smokes, so when the first lands, it leaves a massive gap that is not covered fast enough, and Vitality can run up on sight. Something that should not have been possible. And it's a big problem now that Ens are 4 players ramp and Glaive too slow to get to short. So Vitality has a free way to kill Ens before they can even plant. But for Ens this was needed. They got the first kill, so to wait for smokes when sight is weak was not an option for them. And here the trades comes fast and in the 2v2, Vitality could have played a retake, but with no utility. It forces Vitality to try and the round gets down to 1v1, but Glaive wins it out with 14 HP and Ens takes the first round. <laughs> Fight out from Saiwu. That one gets denied. They're, they're trying to charge at this before Bomb goes down. They want all the blood. They want the blood shed. And well, they lose their heads. It's Glaive. In this round, this is the hero vitality needed. It might not make sense yet, but you will soon see. Round 4 is the first proper buy round from both teams. Let's just ignore the Mac 10 on Glaive. So, what's the game plan? And starts in the default 1 1 3 setup, where they will have 3 players going to ramp. And here it's all about winning control of ramp early, since both teams are fighting for this part on the map. As well as then having one player to lurk outside of B in case Ens has to rotate it over, it's always good to have some info then. And then one player in middle, who will use this nade to hit Spinks and try to force him away from middle. Vitality are going for 3 1 1 setup with 3 on A, 1 in mid, and 1 on B. And here Vitality are not fighting too much for ramp control, since they have by now heard Ens running towards ramp. Since this bridge is so loud, in the universe it has to be like the second loudest thing ever. And we can see Flames is quick to rotate away from ramp, while both teams are flashing up on ramp. And here Diha is fast up on the sandbags, and to jump up here you are reliant on the flashes, so it's good Ens has some good ones here, to force Vitality off the repeak. And here are the flashes that Ens are using. But after getting up, the Flames and Vitality has to win it back. And here they peek out and win the 1v1 against Diha. And this ruins the plan from Ens. And we can see even before Diha died, they were rotating off. Since this was to set up a fake, and hopefully this has forced Vitality to focus on A site. Sadly, since Diha dies, the fake is kind of wasted, since A players can now take back ramp and tell everyone to either rotate or hold. As well as on B, Kyler has been smoked off, so he could not get any information towards B. And this forces Ens back, but to where? Well, the only information they had was towards A ramp, so why not go back? And that is what Ens does. But there is a problem. Flamesy by now has pushed down ramp, and has gotten here. And you might remember the start I said that this was the hero vitality needed, while well, here. When walking down, the light shines like this, and this creates a long ass shadow on the player pushing him. And here, this will warn Flamesy about the player coming back. 
as well as this whiteboard here will show a shadow clearly before any T's are peeking. And this is why as soon as Flamesy finds the first skill, Ants will not even try to win it back, since Flamesy is quick to Molotov, and it will always have the advantage when Ants tries to peek out. This evening in this head-to-head, -head, plays like this one from Flamesy, who goes down ramp, who's got great shadow advantage over the bridge, those shadows casting forward and giving him all the info he needs to keep him blocked off. So now B and A has not worked out, so Ants only has mid left. And why not? Sphinx was being tagged here by a nade earlier, as well as Ants has some smokes left to make this work. And here they will work up towards middle. Only problem is the Vitality are ready for this, since they got a full A and B control. And here is a bloodbath. Ants tries a flash like this from Glaive, it's a good one to know, but Cyber is too ready and hides behind the wall before swinging out on the flash. But can't get anyone, but Ants forgets about him and rather fast after killing Sphinx and Cyber cleans up the round after re-peeking. In a way, only he can. How hell are you? Sphinx looks to tether off him. Nice coverage given out from Glaive. Zywu right back at it. That's snap. Hey all, this video took some time and would mean the world to me if you wanted to subscribe. Since I have some banger of videos coming out later. As well as I have a Discord channel, link in the description. Vitality has taken the lead by one round and won the last three, so how will Ants win this back? Well, how has Vitality won the last few rounds? Well, by meeting the aggression Ants had tried to make work, and Ants knows this. Ants starts by going 3 players on A, and then 2 towards B, using this flash to blind the player peeking early, and the bomb is headed towards B, something that can indicate that Ants will try to fake A, and then go B after. By Vitality are going for a default setup with a 3 one, one where they have 3 players towards A who uses a smoke to keep Ants away from bottom ramp, Sphinx in middle using a Molotov to make sure no Ants player can take middle, and then Messi anchoring B side. Ants has smoked off top ramp, and this is done to meet the bottom ramp smoke Vitality throws. Since it creates a gap Ants can abuse, but they have missed the smoke, and this allows Flamesy to push down to ramp and get close, and this is perfect. He can sit here and just listen for info, and he have impact right away as soon as Apex starts to tag Diha in the smoke. Since he will hear this, he will just tell his captain to continue to spam it, and here Vitality finds the first kill of the round. But then we remember that they are still dealing with new players. Okay, Come Apex. On. Okay. Come on. As well as Vitality, after the smoke fades, uses this flash to blind Hades bottom ramp and allows Flamesy to swing on it and find his kill. Never mind. Vitality flashes one more time for Flamesy and it fully blinds him and allows Hades to run away and stay alive for now. Shot through the smoke and a quick chase from Flames, that's a team flash. But Vitality has gotten full A control. Ants uses this to their advantage, since Vitality have invested a lot to take ramp, both in utility and players. So here they will start the B execute, and here they use this Molotov to force Messi away, but it misses, and Messi can sit behind the smoke and buy this time. And here Ants realize this execute might have forced Vitality to rotate. And they stand corrected, Vitality have sent 4 players towards B, only 1 on A, and that is Flamesy, who is just jump spotting behind the sandbags and will throw the snade as soon as he sees a player crossing. But Ants are too slow, and Vitality has started to rotate, but here is the key, the bomb is still dropped out of B. So in the end Ants has no set plan to where to go yet, and the only goal is just to win back a kill, and why we are seeing Kyler playing this off angle, just hoping for the overpeak by Vitality. Well, it was a fake to a fake to a fake. And it says faked A, then faked B, then faked A again to now go to B. And this works out since Goofy outside of A is making a lot of sound, and this forces Messi to rotate towards middle, a massive misplay as the anchor of B. And Sphinx alone behind white box will not be able to see if any players walk upstairs. And here he's found that Ants has gotten sight, as well as Goofy finding one more kill on A side, and it's a 2v2. And now it's all about holding. Apex gives away his position backside, and here Hades uses these flashes to allow Kyler to peak Guardian. And after this, ends setups like this. Kyler holding the right side of the radiator, and then Hades with the Krieg holding the left side of the radiator. But in a 2v2, being this split up as ends are now, it's not ideal. An Ents gamble on these flashes to find one killing Guardian did not work out. And this leads to Kylo being stuck alone here and dies, and Hades in the 1v2 can't win it, and Vitality takes the fourth round in a row. 80s. No more utility, but two rifles ready to hold off what's left of this retake. Nice quick swing out from Apex and Hades. He allows for them to cross over, hoping to catch him off guard. Krieg hits the headshot nice and swiftly oh. as he tries to keep his head down. Flames, he takes it off. Team coordination is the key word in the round. And starts with three players A and one in mid and one on B, while Vitality are going two players on B, one in middle and two on A. And here in this setup, the coordination you are missing on A when you are only two players is a big difference. It's perfectly shown when Ants takes ramp control. Vitality starts by smoking ramp, while Ants are going for the ramp smokes higher up, and then Glaive with a good spawn running up towards ramp. And here is being supported with a smoke and flashes. And this is perfect. 
Vitality is ready for this fast take with one player behind sandbags and one in ramp, but here the sandbag players do not peek, while Flamesy spots Glaive, falls back only to repeek and die. Your sandbag player is not even trying to help you, why are you repeeking into ramp? And when Apex peeks out it's too late and now he gives away his position, what a fumble the A players did. But the team coordination we are seeing is not done yet. Follow up in the Krieg. I like the trend of offers buying Kriegs. Glaive tries to take a peek off Xbox, will find Flamesy. Ants are happy with this kill and now wants to take B, since last round showed them how weak B could be. But here Vitality are in the perfect position to deal with this, in a 180 degree setup with messy bottom stairs and springs on top of the wood. And here again the team coordination in the setup is off. Ants can first swing messy without springs being able to see them, and then they can deal with springs. And just like that, Ans has got 3 kills and Vitality has gotten 0. Something you can see on Sphinx is that after Messi dies, he repositions towards the right of him, since that is how we were supposed to play. And this movement made him just a little too late to shoot and he could not get anything done. But what happens now? It's a 5v2, so how did this run end as a 1v1? And still needs to get to sight, and here Sabu in middle finds the first Ans player not ready, while Apex on ramp can kill Diha here. But these were the two only players from Ants that were split up from the pact. So what now? Ants starts by using this smoke and Molotov, but this creates an opening and here Saibu can kill Hades who try to get to a better spot. And this makes it so the Tollbox player is just stuck and found, and Glaive with 16 HP is left in the 1v2. But Vitality splits up and Glaive can get two 1v1 fights and win the round. Two. And I'm not talking about your teammate, Zaiwu. Ooh, catches Hades. He knows the other one's behind the box. Here they go. Oh. Pressing in. And it falls on Glaive with his 16 health to swing. He gets the bomb diffuser off, and the time's gonna decide this time. Apex. Ants won the last round. But since so many died, they can only afford one AK and three Galils. And this was the reason Zaiwu and Apex went for the fights in the 2v5 to ruin Ants' economy. Ants are going for the default 3-1-1, while Vitality are going for the default 3-1-1 as well. Kylo starts by using this smoke and flash combo to make sure Vitality knows there are someone on B, but not given any information about it. But the round starts with Saiwu finding the first skill in ramp, and here is something you can see at all levels of CS, even at the highest level. Since Vitality expect that Ants will slow down now, they get lazy and stops to hold ramp. That has to be the only explanation how Glaive can walk out of the ramp smoke and is able to find two kills, when Vitality are three players in ramp, and Glaive is doing this solo to get information and a trade back. This ramp fight so consistent ends more often than not to the favor of Vitality. Glaive, Glaive, I love it. Glaive's been consistent on this ramp fight in more than just this match. He's been very good on Vertigo for this. And I love this with ends. Finds the equalizer and can easily take sight, but rather walks back to look for more mistakes. And this is something a lot of lower rated team does, even higher rated. As soon as you get the opening kill or kills like Persona, you will tunnel vision and forget that you have a lurker that will be useless in the round if you just run out. As well as even though you get two kills, you have no idea how the enemy holds or are set up when going fast. The team coordination will disappear a little bit and that is when the trades will come. So I love that Ants just chills out and looks for more mistakes. Do this yourself when you have so much time left. After Kyler have spent some time bottom B stairs, Jiggling and not finding anyone, Ens decides it's time to take A. And by waiting, Ens has forced Vitality to gamble, and have gambled wrong. And Vitality have all went B, and Ens can walk up on a free site and win the round. The round starts with both Ens and Vitality are going for fast ramp control, with Ens smoking top ramp and using some flashes to force Vitality off ramp, but Vitality will stop this by smoking bottom ramp and then having Flamesy going to take bottom ramp control, and here Vitality finds the first kill of the round. Early on in this game, these deep and fast ramp control takes from Flamesy help Vitality to win some crucial rounds, so I like that Vitality brought it back. While Ens tries to get some information around the map, Vitality goes for such an interesting boost. I've never seen this before, since it's so risky to do. The boost above ramp, but on the right side, this allows Apex to look deep into shore and makes this boost better than the default on the left side, since the left one give you so little info about short at all, while this one allows Apex to hold short from an off angle, as well as Flamesy will never, and I mean never, be clear, since he only holds for top ramp, and when the T's are already up here, they are focusing sight, sandbags, headshot, short, heaven and more, so this is a nice little find from Vitality. Set up and waiting for the crane walk up, but if Glaive comes around short, this will avoid him. Apex, nice headshot though, they dis... Yeah. Yeah. Well, Ants are going for this boost, that is a good boost as well, so who will win the boost war? Glaives tries to peek short, and here you can see the power of this off angle from Apex. Glaives clears more to the middle and left side, and Apex can find the first kill without taking damage. Then they dismount the boost, and Apex uses this flash to allow Flamesy to peek out. 
and here he can't see anyone and falls back. Apex has the whiff of the year. I still wonder why he focused the player with nades out and not the ramp player with the AK, since the AWP will have a harder time to refrag him and the player under him have to change from the nades to a gun. Something to learn when you have the time like Apex had here is to understand who to kill first, like the closest player, the player with the best gun, etc. And here Apex fails it. Come down to the ramp pit, bomb included, Apex pressing along, gets his thing, <laughs> sketchy, he does. Kyler tries to plant, but is found and Vitality takes the round. He do? He's got to plant the bomb, no other choice. They go for the spam, they deny it, and this one just gets a little wacky. Mistakes were made. Piss rounds are always fun to analyze, since it's usually a gamble on what side or how the enemy will play, but Ans has rather understood that if you can hold middle, easily rotate over and play retakes. So Ans are going three players in middle and one on each side. And this is perfect, since Vitality are rather thinking it's a 2-1-2 setup and are going 4 out of 5 players in middle and on 1 outside of B. So they want to win mid control and go for the B split. And Vitality has 2 flashes and 1 nade to do this, while Ants only have 2 flashes but dual Barrettas. And here Ants has boosted up the Barrettas and both the boosted player and the player sandbags will focus mid corner of the box, while Glaive will look for the boost and middle and switch between them. And here Vitality goes for the boost but stops last minute and wants to rather swing after they could not see any players towards Guardian. And this is just a death trap. When something like the whole, let me see. Okay. Sign me up. Ooh, look at this booby trap setup. We got Hades with his head down. We got Goofy up top with Beretta's. Glaive's gonna draw the attention out. Oh, you think this is gonna go well, Vitality, but you're wrong. Chewed through like it's nothing. As they're playing a 2 1 2 setup, but they want to use this to their advantage and have two players on B quite far out towards stairs. To have B on a lockdown, as well as looking down ramp early with D hard jump spawning sandbags. My Vitality are going 3 players ramp, 1 in mid and 1 outside of B. Quite a default setup we saw Ants go for, with the top ramp smoke and all. But Ants feels like they need more map control, and here they have one player taking bottom B stairs and then Goofy using this flash to allow Kyler to peek out of the smoke. But so far, no team has found any opening, and here Ants really wants this. And we see Goofy again with a great flash to allow Kyler to peek over the wood and find one kill and is able to fall back. But Vitality still goes for this and Kyler and Dia finds two more kills and almost a flawless round for Mans to take round 11 for them. Comfortable 5v3 here, cutting one off to the cross. Kylar Goofy combining again and no entry, none allowed. Spinks gets the headshot as Zaiwu falls empty handed. That is only Spinks' second kill of this map. Vitality are set up in a 3-1-1. Saivu using this smoke and Molotov early, while Ants are playing a 3-1-1 setup as well, with the AWP taking short this time to try and find the opening kill. And here Ants wants to deal with this smoke and ramp Saivu through. And they do this by Molotoving behind it to make sure no player are close, since this Molotov will force them to either push into the smoke or away from it. And then this nade lineup to break it. But Hades with all of this happening is able to find 2 kills from short, and Ants are up in a 5v3. Hut, trying to open up, but it's Hades from the short side, double Ooh. through the tarp. Talk to him. And just with some smokes, Ants were able to keep Vitality out of short and B site to really make sure they can't get any information and kills before a site take for now. But the problem now is that on A, Ants are staying to speed up, with Dia stuck behind sandbags, Glavel on backside, and here Dia is found, and this forces the captain to try to get some kills back. And here he goes for this utility set, and this allows him to go short without being seen and before the utility of Vitality drops. And here Glaive finds one kill, as well as Ants has two players coming behind Vitality and Ramp. Ants goes out to box in Vitality and just secure the round. And look how aware Glaive is. After finding the first kill, he walks down to Ramp since he knows both Vitality players had to go to take sight, and he can stay alive a little bit longer. And in the 2v2, Ants wins it and secures where to go, their own map pick. But Flamesy, he comes back around fighting. Goofy's got one, Hades the last. And just like that, we've got Ants map up. What went wrong for Spinks? After watching over Spinks' demo, I can see there are three glaring issues that led to him going 4 and 17, and they are position, decision making and unlucky. Position and decision making are key fundamentals in Counter Strike 2, but why? Well, many believe that aim is not the only reason you are a good player, and that position can even topple the aim part, since if you always can position yourself the best for every fight, you will win the duels 10 out of 10 times. As well as you need to make the correct decision to make your position count, so did Sphinx fail in both aspects. And here he has positioned himself behind white box. And with an SMG, and I love this position here, guaranteed to get close angle fights, so how is he playing this wrong? Well, every time you position yourself here, you need to make a plan, 
And in Spink's case, that should be to rely on your backside player to call when a player is close and then swing off the contact. But here he rather swings right away and takes and takes a distant fight with an SMG to a rifle and dice. Yeah, that's that could take a lot of effort, that could take a little luck, that could take you know the right teammates. In round six, he decides to play behind white box. And again, I love this position. It's a great off angle. But here you need to be prepared for what to do when your backside player leaves. Since in this spot, where he holds from, he can't see if any players walk upstairs. And here that is the problem. When the backside player leaves, Sphinx is just a sitting dot. And here he just peeked and killed. Since when Messi left him, his decision should have been to walk back and try to get a kill or a better spot. Since staying white box in that scenario is hard to even have impact. They are still very much in this B site. Spinks holding on to close, but ooh, nice headshot from Kylar. Last position and decision making. Mistake we will look at on the CT side is this one I already broke down. But let's go into more detail about it. Spinks and Messi are set up in a 180 degree setup. He can't see Messi and under this yellow line. And this is where the T's will be peeking from in the start. Already he is just setting himself up for not having any success. And a good rule of thumb in this 180 degree setup, you need to make sure you understand how the enemy can peek you as well as being able to see your teammate. So this is wrong. And here after Messi dies, Spinks walk out to try to get the trade as soon as he is peeked and just sets himself up for failure. And here is a bad position and late decision making loses him and Vitality the round. Looking to get into the B play, but this corner occupied by Messi nets them nothing. Wow. Perfectly pulled apart here in the B site. Last position and decision making I will mention is here on short in the last round. When it's smoked off, he has no need to peek this and rather hold. But here he goes for the peek anyways, giving the CTs a free kills and a way back to the ramp take. Since with how low the smoke is, Glaive will be able to see Spinks shift walking into the smoke and it's a free kill. Spinks versus Glaive, he loses the duel. This category is hard to explain, but some of the deaths Spinks had were just straight up unfortunate. And as the solo player in middle and B rotator, you can't die so much. So to see some of the ways he died was hard to watch. Like in round 4, he goes middle when Vitality knows it will be middle. And he goes to Guardian to hold in this off angle and is killed rather quick to Glaive's Mac 10. Like you can't write a better script than this. How are you? Spinks looks to tether off him. Nice coverage given out from Glaive. Around 8, we are seeing Spinks get unlucky again. After shooting on Kyler, who right now has a Mac 10, Spinks and his teammate wants to push him. And here, running Mac 10 gets better of Spinks, who by now has to be full tilt mode. Getting excited about like a week of form, basically. So, yeah, I guess it can be excited. Talking about dying unlucky, then Glaive has his numbers. In two out of the last three rounds, Glaive keeps finding him mid jiggling back and forth. So Spinks can only see the woods and dies in round nine and dies behind the wood after Glaive hits a lucky wallbang on him. By the end of the match, Spinks had one of his worst maps ever. But as many pros, this will not keep you down. And on Anubis, he had a 1.3 rating. One whole rating above what he had on Vertigo. So he managed to get a little bit back before Vitality lost the third map. And to be fair, he was not the only reason Vitality lost. But they might have had a better shot winning Vertigo if he played better. Vitality has been super bad this whole event. But this is not to try to make it look like Enz got lucky or faced a bad Vitality. Not at all. Enz played a perfect game of Vertigo. And after three maps, they won the match 2 and 1, fair and square. And I can't wait to see how the Polish Enz team will do in Katowice in their home country. Thanks for watching, and our two videos YouTube told me you would like. Bye.